Psycho, excerpt, the Psycho is a scary story about a girl who starts dating a new guy. Her friends tell her there is something wrong with him, but she ignores their warnings. My name is Dasha and I want to tell you a story about my last boyfriend. We met at university, we accidentally bumped into each other in the hallway. He asked me to go for coffee with him and I agreed. He told me his name was Norman. We talked about this and that. He was handsome and witty. I was very attracted to him and before long, we were dating. Norman was very sensitive and caring guy, not like my previous boyfriends. It was like he was from another planet. He was always interested in what I wanted, always concerned about my needs, but at the same time he was very masculine. I felt safe with him. Everything was fine at first. It was my friend's birthday and our whole group gathered in a bar to celebrate. I was excited because I brought Norman and I wanted to introduce him to everyone. Sitting at the table, we were having fun, drinking and laughing. Then some of the guys went outside to smoke and Norman went with them. They were gone for five minutes and when they returned, I was approached by my friend Simon. Dasha, I think there's something wrong with this Norman guy, he said. What do you mean? I asked. Well, he's kind of strange. He started talking about his mother, saying really weird things. Then he started giggling like an idiot for no reason. He's not normal. Norman, not normal. Are you sure? I said. Of course, I spoke with Norman about it, but he denied everything. He said my guy friends were just jealous of our relationship and they were trying to drive a wedge between us. I believed him, especially since Simon had asked me out on a date one time and I had to turn him down. It was possible that he just wanted to turn me against Norman and get rid of his competition. But the more time I spent with Norman, the more I started to notice some strange behavior. Sometimes, he would get a faraway look in his eyes and go silent for a few minutes. Then he would start talking again as if nothing had happened. And he began to call me, Mommy. I put up with his little eccentricities, because everything else in the relationship was wonderful. And then something happened, it was like a bolt from the blue. One day, he kidnapped me. We at my house and my parents were out. I went upstairs to get something. All of a sudden, I felt him grab me from behind and he put a handkerchief over my nose and mouth. It was soaked in some kind of chemical and within seconds, I blacked out. When I woke up, I was in some shabby apartment with a dirty rag stuffed in my mouth. My arms and legs were tied to the bed and I had a terrible headache. Norman came in, he put his finger to his lips and pulled the rag from my mouth. I immediately screamed and Norman slapped me across the face really hard. Don't you dare cry, he growled. My mother never cried, okay. He untied my hands and gave me a withering look. He told me that if I tried to run away, things would only get worse. Norman took me into the kitchen and sat me down at the table. He put a plate of food in front of me and told me to eat. All this time, he did not take his eyes off me for a second, so I just did as I was told. When I looked into Norman's eyes, I could see he was a complete psycho. How could I have not seen this in him before? He smiled at me, as if everything was normal. How are things at work, mommy? He asked. I had no other choice but to play along with him. All good, I replied. So, we'll go on holiday together next week. Of course, I mumbled. Oh, by the way, someone told me you have a new man in your life, mommy. That's not true is it? You wouldn't do that to me, would you mommy? I saw how angrily he was staring at me. No, I replied. Well, I knew it wasn't true, he grinned. We don't need anybody else. We're happy together, just me and you. After I.F. finished eating, he took me into the bedroom and forced me onto the bed. He tied my hands, put a gag in my mouth and left. This was how my nightmare began. Sometimes Norman remained with me for a long time, telling me how things were going in college. He always called me, Mom, or, Mommy. I went along with it, because I was afraid of what he might do if I resisted. If I made one mistake, he would beat me terribly. I was stuck in that dingy apartment for six whole days. My room was always locked and there was no clock, so I had to guess what time it was. Norman would come and go. I don't know where he got the money, but he always brought me food and sweets. He said, I love my mother and I want to make her happy. A boy's best friend is his mother. I knew that this couldn't go on. My parents and my friends were probably worried sick. I wondered if they had contacted the police already. I wondered if anyone was looking for me. One time, I tried to reason with him. I tried to explain that I was not his mother and he needed to let me go, but he beat me again like crazy. 
On the sixth day, Norman woke me up as usual and told me he was going out to buy us breakfast. I heard the front door close and I started trying to free myself. I felt that I could move my right hand a little. The ropes were not very tight. It took about 20 minutes, but I managed to work it free. I quickly untied myself and rushed to the door, but of course, I was firmly locked. I looked out the window. I was on the fifth floor. I grabbed a chair and threw it at the window. With a loud crash, the glass broke and the chair landed on the pavement outside, almost hitting some passers-by. Leaning out the window, I screamed at the top of my lungs, help me. He's going to kill me. Help, he's a psycho. And then I saw him. Norman was standing in the street with a bag in his hand, glaring up at me. By the look in his eyes, I knew the only thing he wanted now was to kill me. People were gathering under the window, so my crazy boyfriend just turned and ran off. Ten minutes later, a police car arrived. The officers broke down the door and rescued me. I will never forget the look in my parents' eyes when they took me home. I spent the rest of the night weeping uncontrollably. It turned out that the police were already looking for Norman. He was on the run from the authorities long before he met me. He was wanted for a double murder. His name wasn't even Norman, it was Ed and he was actually 30 years old. He had a history of mental illness and had been in and out of insane asylums for most of his life. Two years before, he had been living with his mother. He was completely obsessed with her. His mother was dating a man and she brought him home with her one night. When Norman caught them together, he flew into a violent rage. He beat both of them to death with a hammer and then just disappeared. I hope the police will find him soon, because until they do, I am too scared to leave my house. If you want my advice, be careful who you date.